Hello and welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, I wanted to, on this episode, I wanted to show you my little emergency station that's out in the garage. Uh, most of you have seen my regular ham shack, and uh, <clears throat> if you haven't, you can look back in some of the videos that I've already made, and uh, I've, I've got lots of pictures of it on there. I'm kind of proud of it. Uh, you know, I'm running a Flex, an Icom 7000, and in a minute, over this away, I'll show you the Collins station that's set up. But, where I live, uh, we have a lot of power outages. There's lots of trees, and it seems like every time a storm comes through, and the first time the wind blows strong, we lose the power. So, uh, after I've been here about oh six eight months I said you know I need to set up something so that I can get onto the Skywarn net uh, on two meters and uh, if the power goes out <clears throat> I went through a couple of storms and uh, didn't have any power and of course my handy talkie wasn't quite able to hit the uh, repeaters that I wanted to hit from my home here that's kind of way out in the country. I am Skywarn certified. I'm also uh, uh, FEMA certified with the uh, 100, 200, and 700 uh, certifications from FEMA. So uh, <clears throat> I usually try to, uh, especially when there's a storm, get on, on Skywarn and uh, kind of follow the storm trackers and report, if necessary, from my QTH here at my house. So, uh, I'm going to take you in the garage in a second and kind of show you my emergency, emergency station setup. And uh, it is battery backed up, so uh, if the power goes out, uh, I'm on battery. So, I wanted to show you that. Uh, of course, it's in the garage, and it's not real pretty, but it's real functional. So, uh, hang tight. We're going to move out in the garage, and I'll show you that emergency setup. Maybe you'll get some ideas uh, for yourself on how to set up a little station, just in case the power goes okay. off. <clears throat> okay, so we're back out in the garage. Probably got a good echo, too, on this video, but... Anyway, we're inside the garage right now, and in a little corner of it, I actually have an extra little desk. I set it up in the corner here. There's a large uh, deep cycle battery, kind of like uh, what you'd use on a trolling motor in a boat. Regular full-size uh, auto battery, except it's deep cycle. And it's sitting on a little roller cart here that I'll show you when we get Toward the end of this video, I'll show you that battery pack. Now everything's using Anderson power poles, so uh, quick connect, quick disconnect. Most of the connections are Anderson power poles. So what I have set up here, I have a laptop set up in case I want to work uh, from the garage instead of from the shack, which I do sometimes if the weather's good. Let's kind of go across and I'll show you some of the equipment. I managed to pick up a little scanner, an old style Uniden uh, Bearcat, I think, scanner. It's, it's an old one, it's only analog. But uh, luckily, uh, most of the public service over here out in the country is still analog. And it does receive digital, but uh, not a whole lot of digital. It was real restricted back uh, when this, was, this particular model was produced. But it works great anyway for what I use it for. I basically have it tuned to uh, the EMS uh, here in Hunt County and to the hospital frequency and to the sheriff's department. and. Department of Public Safety uh, frequencies, and it works fine there, no problem. And so I can sit out here and listen to it. Now, what I did here 
if you see this wire coming off of it that I'm holding right now, uh, that wire goes up into the attic. And up there, I have a small comet vertical just up in the attic. It's a dual band vertical, not very, about eight feet long. It's not a big one. But it allows me to uh, basically transmit and or listen on this scanner uh, on two meters or 70 centimeters. Right now I have the scanner plugged in to the antenna that's up in the attic and I get much better reception. Normally it, it would be used with this little uh, uh, antenna, you might call it a rubber ducky, but it's a little bit more than a rubber, rubber ducky. It does receive aircraft signals from DFW Airport, of course. The planes are way up in the air. I'm not surprised that it does receive it. It's got to be 60 miles from here to that airport. <clears throat> but I do receive uh, aircraft, and I can receive the local uh, public service with this small antenna. But when I'm not using the uh, two-meter radio over here, I usually just plug in the scanner uh, because a lot of times in the morning I like to come out here and if the weather's okay and drink coffee and listen to the little scanner. So anyway, a little scanner. Then you're going to see two small MFJ meters, duplicates, nothing fancy. Uh, one of them is, kind of, is for VHF, UHF, and the other one is for HF. So this one goes to this radio, and this one goes to that radio. Uh, then I got a little uh, jet stream uh, power supply that runs both of the radios that I'm using right now. But the neat part of the shack is back in here where you can't see it, but it's basically a uh, power gate, rig blaster power gate. And what it does is, uh, it's charging this battery right now with these radios running. It's keeping this battery charged up. But if the power should suddenly go out, it automatically switches to the battery. Uh, and the radios don't blink or anything. They just keep on running. And then you're on battery power. So if I should lose power in a storm, uh, the little uh, power gate back there will automatically switch these radios over to the battery. And you know, for listening purposes, uh, not a whole lot of transmission. I could run for <laughs> probably 8 hours or 10 hours or something like that, maybe even 12 hours off this standard size car battery uh, deep cycle down here. Depends on how much transmission I did. but. Certainly long enough to get me uh, through some kind of a short-term emergency. And to get the weather reports from the uh, guys run, and girls running around in their cars doing storm tracking. So uh, the other equipment here is, uh, I, this is the radio, one of the radios I recommend all the time. This is Kenwood 281A. Kenwood 281A. And that's a little two meter, it's 65 watts. 65 watts does have some lower power settings. And uh, again, I'm way out, way out in the country, so I do want some watts in order to make me be able to reach out there and uh, hit some more distant repeaters, two meter repeaters. So that's that Kenwood 281A right here. And then above it, uh, I have an ICOM 7200, and uh, again, I bought that strictly for portable use, emergency uses. It's kind of rubberized. It's got uh, the same kind of, uh, I don't want to call it waterproof. It's not waterproof, but it has the same gaskets in it and uh, water protection, splash protection that ICOM puts on their mar marine radio. So uh, <clears throat> that's why I bought that. 
It can be carried around out in the field. It's got handles on the front of it. And the neat thing about this is the handles protect all the front of this radio. And all the connections in the back are recessed in. So you can actually set this radio up straight down and it'll just sit there. Uh, pretty neat for Incon operation. All right, so that's uh, the equipment. Oh, I uh, almost forgot one. I uh, also have a little uh, uh, LDGIT100 automatic tuner that you might be able to see sitting right on top of this radio right here, uh, which allows me to just simply push the tune button and the radio automatically tunes. It's good to 125 watts. Uh, it kind of makes it real handy for emergency use because uh, you can just push a button and be tuned up in whatever band you might be operating. As far as antennas go, this radio right now is connected. Uh, you can't see it, but I can. I'll show you a picture of it here in a minute. And I'm going to kind of walk you up the ladder here up into the attic and show you that too. But. This radio right now is connected to a buddy pole, which is set up in the garage right now for 20 meters. I uh, went ahead and set it up, and did the SWR, got it all set up right. And I have enough slack on the uh, coax to where I can undo it and just simply carry that buddy pole right out the garage doors and outside and then raise it up if need be. Uh, <clears throat> of course I do use that whenever uh, any of our radio clubs uh, have a portable event. I'll take it down and it all, the antenna elements and everything all pack away into this tube and uh, really the only other piece that I'll have in the car would be the little tripod and mast that the buddy pole is mounted on. Uh, I also went on ahead and as you can see, well I don't know if you can see it or not, let me kind of uh, lower the uh, camera a little bit so you can see the two boxes. Uh, yeah, I just need to lower it down a little bit. Let me do that. And down below the desk you can see I've got a couple of uh, tote boxes down there and that's basically all the equipment I would take out into the field with me if we uh, had an emergency or uh, if we're just uh, having radio in the park or something. So I've got it all packed up ready to go. Uh, in that box I've also got a uh, QSO King which is an in-fed long wire. Uh, it's another antenna that I always recommend. I've got one in the backyard, if you remember. That's 127 feet long. However, the one in the box is only about 36 feet long. Very easy to put up. Uh, you know, just throw it over a tree and uh, basically you're ready to go. So I have one of those in, that bo in those boxes and also I have a uh, uh, Alpha Delta DXCC in the box that we could put up uh, if we wanted a little bit better antenna. Uh, so all that is packed away. All I have to do is grab those two boxes, grab that radio, and of course the buddy pole, and take it on out of here and I'm ready to go. So uh, I did put the battery onto a cart. So let me kind of show you that. And I'll walk around here and kind of pull it out for you a little bit. So you can get a little bit better idea. I just had a little cart. And it, it does fit the battery. And here's my Anderson uh, connections. Uh, going in the back and then plugging into that power gate that I showed you a little earlier. So uh, just simply a deep cycle battery, standard automotive size, and should give me the ability to run for quite a while uh, in some kind of emergency situation. 
The only other thing I would like to do, and I may do that in the next few months, is to uh, get a solar cell get that I can pack away and uh, you know take with me, so that I, that I could keep this battery charged, uh, charged up out in the field. But I hadn't done that yet, and the power gate seems to be working just fine, keeps the battery topped off all the time. So let me kind of get you back up uh, where we were before. Back over here a little bit. And get you another shot of the station a little bit. And uh, I'm going to take this uh, camera now off of this tripod. And I'm kind of going to walk you around a little bit and show you a couple of things. So hang tight. We're going to walk around a little bit. And uh, we're just kind of walking around in the garage a little bit. And here's that uh, buddy pole that I told you I had set up uh, on a tripod. And I can just walk that right outside, right over to there, and raise it up. And basically be ready to go for HF uh, emergency situation that might occur. Uh, here around Greenville, Texas. So there's the buddy pole and it's set up right now for 20 meters. So there's my 20 meters. Meanwhile, up in the attic, let's kind of go up there. So remember that wire that was coming from this little scanner right here? Well it goes kind of up here and it goes into the ceiling right there. I mounted a little plate uh, with an SO239 uh, pass-through on it so that I can just screw and unscrew the cable uh, if need be. So it comes through the ceiling so we have to go up in the attic to see what what else we have up here. So let me turn some lights on a little bit. Well up here I have a uh, what you call uh, ham sticks mounted in a dipole fashion up here in the attic on another little tripod and this is set for 40 meters. This is set for 40 meters. And then I have the uh, little uh, uh, Kushcraft vertical. I just have it, you know, setting up here, leaning up against the uh, uh, beam across the top of the ceiling right there seems to it works just fine has very low SWR don't ask me why but it does and uh, seem to get out just great so I have a switch down here and if I want to switch uh, from the uh, 40 meter uh, hamstick arrangement back over to that buddy pole I can just throw that switch and I'll go from 20 to 40 meters so in other words I can work uh, without too much fooling around I can work 20 or 40 meters just by throwing a uh, switch uh, I'll switch between the 40 meter up in the attic and the 20 meter uh, buddy pole that's set up in here I can switch back and forth between those two antennas for any emergencies. And of course talk on the little two meter uh, out that uh, little uh, eight foot vertical that's up in the attic. So uh, let's pause here. We'll go back in the ham shack and hope this gave you some ideas on setting up an emergency station. So here we are back in the ham shack again. I hope uh, that gave you some ideas on setting up a uh, uh, emergency station <coughs> for in your own house or wherever. And I wanted to kind of finish up. You know, I got my uh, Collins KWM2 back and 30L1 back from the uh, fella that took a look at them. I had a little problem with them, and the problem was uh, the KWM2 has a BNC connector on the back of it that uh, some ham had in the past had put.
put on there. And uh, the pin on the coax, the center pin to that BNC connector had broken off. I looked all through it, couldn't see anything wrong, and it took an old timer to find that pin stuck inside that BNC connector on the back of that KWM2. But once he removed it, everything worked fine. <laughs> anyway, I was glad to get that back with basically uh, nothing wrong with it other than a broken pin on a BNC connector. Anyway, we're up and running on it and working just fine now. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. And as I usually do, I wish you clear skies. And remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. 73, everybody, and clear skies. See y'all later.